Gus Sarala was born in Austin, Texas, and grew up in Eagle Pass near the Mexico-US border, which was an experience for Gus. Gus's family is actually quite interesting as well. His grandfather, Gustavo Raul Sr., was a cowboy, and his father, Gustavo Raul Jr., worked in law enforcement as a game warden, so they were both dudes who were really rough and tough, up on their feet kind of guys. And now, a couple decades later, Gus sits in front of a computer and yells at people all day. So yeah, living up to the family legacy, Gus. But back to Eagle Pass, the town is extremely isolated in the middle of absolute nowhere and was very disconnected from the rest of the world. Everyone in the town knew each other, so the people of Eagle Pass knew that Gus wasn't born there and he was treated like an outcast and ostracized by all the other kids. And because of this, Gus grew up having almost no friends, so he had to rely on himself for entertainment. In fact, by the ninth grade, he had a grand total of two friends, one of them being Frank, the DM from Heroes and Halfwits. He did have a stalker though, some girl who started following him around. However, while this sounds really sad for Gus, when looking back at himself at this age, Gus admittedly described himself as being a huge turd. At the time, Gus thought that he knew everything in the world and was smarter and better than everyone in Eagle Pass, so total superiority complex. Do you think current you would put up with 17-year-old you? Current me would choke the shit out of 17-year-old <laughs> And because of this feeling of being superior, as well as being treated like an outsider, he dreamed of leaving Eagle Pass, counting the days until he finished high school so he could just leave and never come back. That was his goal. So no matter how bad it got for him, no matter how miserable he was, he always looked to the future, waiting, just waiting for the day he could leave. And once that day came, Gus immediately left and went to university right after high school. Since this was in the 90s, the internet was still in its infancy, and Gus was really interested in it. And it was this interest in technology and the internet that influenced his choice of education. So he enrolled in Rice University in Houston, Texas, majoring in cognitive science, specifically studying things like artificial intelligence. So Gus had a pretty cool education. Well, I mean, it would be cool if he actually stayed, since Gus immediately dropped out after only a year, because Gus went to Rice and was like, the people in Eagle Pass are dumb. They're all idiots. I don't belong in that town because I'm actually smart. I'm not like those morons. Then he went to university, got horrible grades, and realized that he is in fact a moron. However, other than the grades, he did have a fairly good reason to drop out because this was 1997. So the internet had existed for a while at this point, but now it was really starting to pick up traction and Gus predicted that the internet would be the next big thing that would take off and change the world. And he knew that if he stayed in school studying, he would miss his chance to create something amazing and be a part of the rise of the internet. So after saving up a couple hundred dollars, he packed up and moved to Austin, Texas, looking for a job working in the tech industry. So now Gus arrived in lovely sunny Austin but there was a teensy-weensy problem. Nobody wanted to hire him. Turns out, it's hard to get a job when you dropped out of school and have basically no skills or experience. So when he got there, he only had a couple hundred dollars to get by with, and he ended up having to sleep on some dude's floor. He did this for three entire months. Three months of sleeping on a floor, three months of failing to get a job, and three months of rationing out his money. And now, he was about to be flat broke, completely out of cash. And he was like, in about a week, I'm going to run out of money and I'm going to have to either move back to Eagle Pass or live homeless in the streets of Austin. And when I say about to be homeless, I'm not exaggerating, like he could barely afford to eat. It reached the point that just buying a 99 cent burger at Wendy's was difficult for him to afford. So he was like, hmm, I'm going to end up homeless. Or I could go back to Eagle Pass and live with my parents. So be homeless or Eagle Pass. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be homeless. But out of pure luck, things started to change for Gus because Gus's roommate was applying for a job at a tech support call center and he needed a ride, so Gus drove him there. And Gus thought to himself, wait, I should just apply there. So he sent in his application and they hired him. So Gus didn't have to live homeless and thankfully, thank God, he didn't have to go back to Eagle Pass. And the best part is, is that Gus got the job and his roommate didn't. So after that, Gus started his job working as phone support for the tech company Telenetwork. When Gus started, he went to the new employee orientation where he met someone 
very special. Ba 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 ba. So this was the first time Bernie and Gus met, but they didn't really interact much until later. Within a couple months, Gus got promoted from a new hire to a manager, because there were like three people at the company at the time, and that's when Bernie and Gus actually started to interact more. Since working at a call center can be really draining on the employees, the company bought a Sega Dreamcast for the office to help the employees unwind. So Bernie and Gus, both being gamers, decided to play a game of Dead or Alive 2. And when they started the first round, Bernie pretty quickly beat Gus. And Bernie felt bad about beating him so handily, so he was like, Hey man, I'm really sorry. I'm just, I play games a lot, so I'm, I'm pretty good. Sorry about that. And that absolutely infuriated Gus. So the next round started, and Gus kicked Bernie's ass and got a flawless victory. And that's how they became friends. I won't go super into it, because they already made an animated adventure about it. But around a year later, a new employee walked in. He was some random dude who had tattoos across his body, and he had frosted tips. So the guy came in and was like, Hey, my name's Jeff Ramsey. And Gus thought, I hate this guy. Yep, that's right. Gus said that his first impression of Jeff was he thought he was a jerk. But it turns out that when Jeff got to work, he was actually really good and was pulling really high numbers. He was cutting through calls like butter and was insanely fast at helping customers. And Gus was like, that delinquent Jeff, there's no way that that hooligan is pulling these good numbers. He's gotta be cheating somehow. And I'm gonna catch him in the act. So Gus started listening in on his phone calls to see what Jeff was up to. Mm, hello? Oh. <laughs> hello, Mr. Ramsey. The medicine for your super herpes just came in. What? What am I listening to? But as time went on, and Gus kept listening, and listening, and listening, he realized, this guy isn't cheating, he's just genuinely good at his job. So Gus started chatting with Jeff, and he realized that Jeff had the same dry, sarcastic sense of humor that he did. And Gus was like, ah, we're perfect for each other. And it was love at first sight. And that's the story of how Gus and Jeff met. So Gus and Jeff, sitting together during their shifts, became the best of friends. And because their jobs at the call center were really dry and mind-numbing, they wanted a creative outlet, so they started making websites on the side. And one of the websites they made was Drunk Gamers, where they would combine alcohol and gaming, doing things like drunk game reviews and highlights. After making the website, Bernie also got involved and got an idea for a really funny video they could make. At this point, it was the early 2000s, and Apple put out their Switch commercials, which was a marketing campaign showing ads of people switching from Windows computers to Macs and talking about how much they liked it better. So Bernie had an idea to make a parody of the ad, making fun of the fact that gaming on a Mac sucks fat cock. At the time, Gus had already left Tele Network to work at a different company, but he was still friends with Jeff and Bernie. So Bernie had Gus play a guy who was a gamer that switched to a Mac and sarcastically talked about how much better Macs were for video games. The confusing thing about PCs is just, you go to the store, and there's just so many games. But on the Mac, there's just six. And you know which ones are good, because you've already played them all on the PC like five or six years ago. So they put the video on the internet, and linked the download around the web, and it ended up getting really, really popular. So popular that the magazine Computer Gaming World contacted them and said, Hey, we really like this video, and we want to share it on our magazines. At the time, you couldn't just share a video on YouTube for everyone to see, because YouTube didn't exist. So the way they shared the video was by putting it on a disc and gluing it to the front of the magazine and mailing it to everyone. So Bernie, Jeff, and Gus thought, this is awesome. We can use this to advertise our website and get more exposure. But the problem was, was that Drunk Gamers was finished because they originally planned to make the site to get drunk and get free games. But no one wanted to associate their company with a bunch of drunks, so they didn't get many games. So because of that, and also creative differences, they shut down the site, which was an issue because at the end of the video, there was a link address to DrunkGamers.com. So they were like, well shit, what do we do now? We can't just let this chance for exposure go to waste. And Bernie was like, well, we could link the other thing. You know, the other thing we're working on? That thing? All right, sure. And Bernie was like, okay, let's make a new version of the video and put our new website on the end. Well, I used to be. And thus, redvsblue.com got shared in Computer Gaming World, and on April 1st, 2003, when that magazine came out, 
Red vs. Blue officially started. Hey, yeah. You ever wonder why we're here?